just can't take you seriously. I've taken down some tough customers. Prepare to be amazed. Begin. Hi, it's Tom taking a look at the ins and outs of Injustice 2 on Xbox One X. Now, we've covered plenty of Enhanced X titles since the console's launch, but this time there's a twist. Injustice 2 is one of an increasing number of games to support high dynamic range on both Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. And what better way to celebrate that than to capture the game on both consoles in 4K with HDR enabled. Now, if you're viewing this on a compatible TV or even smartphones like the Galaxy S8, LG V30 or Sony's XZ Platinum phone, you're set for a real treat. Of course, if you don't have the hardware and if you're viewing this on a standard dynamic range TV, YouTube will just convert the video using a method called tone mapping to give a regular presentation. No problems there, it'll just appear as normal. The benefit of HDR in Injustice 2 though is clear. Action in the DC Universe plays out in dark, even gothic environments. It creates moments where bright streaks of light contrast beautifully with its pitch blacks, like across the Brainiac ship stage, and the HDR effect really shines. Now as I've said, this is a feature of both Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, and you get a slider at the start to calibrate the white point against your TV. For reference, I've left this at the default 200 setting for each. Ok, so a bit of a recap before we kick off the analysis. The standard Xbox One version runs at 900p, while the regular PS4 version sits at 1080p. Meanwhile, PS4 Pro users got a reasonable bump to 1440p during gameplay, with improved shadows, textures and motion blur over the regular consoles. Now what you get on Xbox One X is yet another boost in resolution, and the game now runs permanently at a native 2880x1620 here. So that's 1620p, a 26.6% .6 higher pixel count than the 1440p on PS4 Pro. Here we have the two enhanced consoles side by side, using a dual wield method to control both machines at the same time. Essentially, whatever input goes to one console goes to the other. And to my surprise, gameplay synced up closely enough for it to work in a comparison. In practice, the res boost on Xbox One X sticks out more than I expected when in still shots. There's no doubt that the extra GP horsepower pays off in image quality on X. In motion, it stands as an upgrade over PS4 Pro 2, but not for cutscenes, as I'll cover later in this video. And of course, it's an even more impressive lift when put next to a regular Xbox One, a 3.24 times boost in resolution overall compared to 900p. It's a success story on paper, and the fact is you get all the bells and whistles added to the PS4 Pro version as well. Shadow quality is an exact match for Sony's enhanced machine, and likewise for motion blur sample quality. But curiously, texture quality is visibly higher on Xbox One X at some points. Now that's partly due to a texture filtering upgrade, but certain spots show a better asset as well. It's rare to catch, but you can see on the walls of the Kandak stage right at the start, or the floor of the Gorilla City area. There's a small but evident upgrade in settings for these spots, but broadly speaking, texture quality is matched everywhere else. There's also a difference in ambient occlusion for Xbox One X, giving the machine some darker shading corners. Check out this point here and shading is visibly altered, but it's a minor detail overall. For everything else, this is running at PS4 Pro level settings, only now it's rendering at a high resolution in gameplay. One final point that's worth mentioning then. While PS4 Pro is 1440p during gameplay, cutscenes on that console render at 1620p, an exact pixel match for what Xbox One X is pushing out. It affects all intro sequences and special moves, each of which still run at 30 frames per second on both consoles. The difference is Microsoft's machine stays at 1620p resolution permanently, even in gameplay, while PS4 Pro switches to 1440p the moment it hands control back to you. Presumably that's to make sure it has the GPU overhead to keep the game running at 60 frames per second where it counts, but still, it does mean there's very little difference visually between the two during cinematics. Speaking of which, the performance profile on Xbox One X is much like the PS4 Pro version. It handles the resolution upgrade with no problems whatsoever, and gameplay ticks along at 60 frames per second with no drops to speak on. There is an adaptive vSync in play, but this modified Unreal Engine 3 is so rarely challenged in performance, you'll be hard pressed to catch it. In fact, the only screen tear I've recorded is during a transition to a special move, which then kicks in a 30fps lock. 
Now, in my view, it'd be fascinating to see just how close Xbox One X is to holding 60 FPS for these segments. Could running the game at 1080p or even 900p have created a consistent target frame rate through gameplay and scripted super moves? On the other hand, if it is determined to stick at 30 FPS, it begs the question, why doesn't Xbox One X boost its resolution for cutscenes in a similar fashion to PS4 Pro? Judging by Pro's shift in resolution at these points, there is an extra overhead that can be tapped into. We don't get an equivalent boost on X hardware sadly, but at the very least everything is well optimised for 60fps where it counts. It's a solid enhancement on Xbox One X then, and the results do pay off. Whatever PS4 Pro has, the Xbox One X version takes it and improves it with a clearer image and some subtle enhancements over the top in ambient occlusion and textures. The star of the show though really is the HDR implementation, which is common to both machines. There's a focus on resolution as the metric of worth when it comes to showing how much better one version is over the other. The idea is the more pixels the better, but clearly games like Injustice 2, Gears of War 4 and Gran Turismo Sport all show high dynamic range is a very big deal in the presentation of games too, and NetherRealm Studios work here ranks up there as one of the best uses of the standard. But that's all I have for today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, do let me know with a like or subscribe. This video is encoded in the HEVC format too, and for the original 4K HDR source file, be sure to check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. Until next time though, thanks for watching. Make yourself a king, Grodd. I am king of the jungle. That is disputable. Begin.